Welcome to video number three in the beginner series for Unreal Engine 4. In this video, as I said in the last one, we're going to go over how to use the engine, what the engine is, and starting with some content in the engine. First things first, this big square in the middle is the viewport. This is your look into how your game will look. It's your view into the game. Across the top we have a toolbar. You can save your current level. So at the moment we don't have any levels saved. We don't have anything. Source control is more for if you were uh, maybe a couple of people working on a game. You can use it solo. Uh, it just allows you to upload your content to a server to help save from any data loss. If your hard drive fries, for example, if it's checked into source control, once you get a new hard drive, you can pull it out of source control and you've lost nothing. Modes, we will go over in a different video. Content opens the content browser, which should be open down here by default. There's a marketplace option, settings option, which contains all of your game settings. There's blueprints, which are as options relating to blueprints, opening a level blueprint, opening a blueprint class if it's hidden somewhere in your content browser or creating a new blueprint class. Uh, cinematics is where you will create cinematics. Build, build your game so any changes you make it will build them here so building lighting. Lighting is baked in by this option here so if you add a new mesh it needs to build the shadows and the lighting and you can choose lighting only here to save it from building your whole game the whole every single time you click the button play is where you'll play your game now you will see here that we can move about but it's not a character we are just controlling the viewport camera and that is how we're moving you can change the options here of how you want to play. I like a new editor window as it will open independent of what you're doing. And this is great if you're in an additional window. So let's just, don't worry about what I'm doing. If we're in this window and we have playing a new window, it will play on top. If we have it set to the selected viewport, you'll see we can't see what's going on we'd have to minimize to get access to it so let's delete that because we don't need that at the moment and then launch lets you launch your game on your device so it would have to build build the game and package it and everything if you use this option you couldn't add your escape key as an options menu because when you press escape it brings you out of the game if you launch it, you can use Escape as and test your options menu and things like that. And there are different options in the drop down here. If you were doing on mobile and your mobile was connected, it would appear in the devices section here. So you can play your game and test on a mobile device. <clears throat> this is the world outliner. This shows you everything that is in your world here at the moment. So this floor, for example, if you want to find something, you can use your outliner. Where's the skylight? Where's the sky sphere? Where's my player start? And if you hit F, you can focus on that. So if you have a large world, you can just hit F and find where something is. So if I go out here and hit F, it takes me straight back to the player start, because that's what I have selected in my world outliner. This is the details panel. Whatever you have selected will bring up details here. And these details are specific to whatever you have selected. So for this, I have the transform, which you'll get in most cases. The next one is the player start tag, which will go through tags at a later date. But So if I click on my sphere reflection here next, still have my transform. But I also have now a reflection capture option. Option? Option? Wow. But there is no object option because it doesn't need one where the player start would need an object option. Along the bottom is your content browser 
which allows you to browse all the content inside of your game as the name would suggest here is where you would add something new so let's add a new folder and we'll call this player so anything that belongs to the player will go in this folder so if you right click here this is the same options as the add new as you can see the only option that you don't get here if you right click is this add new here add feature or content pack so on the top level if you click here this will take you to your top level click add new and add a feature or a content pack and this is where we can add those templates we were looking at earlier on or we can add the content pack so start the content we're going to add this to our project so now if we go back to our top level we have a start content folder with all the start content that epic gives you when you're using unreal engine so some sample textures sample materials there are a couple of particles in there that are made in cascade but Niagara is the new particle system that is used inside of Unreal Engine. You can still use Cascade, but Niagara is the one that is more... It's a newer tool, so it has more options and it can be a lot more powerful. So there is the start content folder and our content folder. Now if we were to close this project with our player folder empty, when we reopen it, it might disappear, it might not, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I think that's more of a space saving method than anything else. So we're going to create our first blueprint. So right click, blueprint class, and obviously we're making a player, so we're going to make the player character. And I'm going to call this my player character. If I can spell character, hit enter, and now we have our first blueprint. And our folder is now safe. So, in the next one, we are going to create a player character from scratch. As you see, if we go in here, this will give us a base components of a capsule, which allows collisions of the character, an arrow, which just tells us which way our character is facing. A mesh, which is blank, as we don't have any meshes to use. And a character movement, which allows a character to move. We are going to create some code in there to allow our character to move about. And we also need to create some game settings, which we'll also go over in the next video. Please comment if you need any help with anything, as I have spoken on quite a few topics at the moment. And... If you haven't already, please subscribe, as this will help me out a lot. See you in the next video.